Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music Academy. In a moment, we're going to have a look. That's Judith arrived then. All right, ladies and gents. I'm putting this tutorial together fairly rapidly following a session at College Today where I'm showing my students how to mix in Premiere Pro. Before you get started with your project, do make sure that all the content for your project is on the local drive of the computer and is all within the same folder. I'll show you how to set this up. I have a folder in my documents for Premiere projects. This is a folder I've got for all my tutorials relating to mixing in Premiere Pro. Uh, it's including the projects I'm using. So this is the one I'm actually using the demonstration. This is one I'm going to be using to create the actual tutorial. So it's a bit of a complicated one this and this is all the content related to these two projects. And can you see that it's all named? Certainly the stuff that I want to use has all got titles on it so it's not giving me just random codes. I know what all these things are. That's really important. Get yourself organized. So it's a project that I've just put together with a couple of bits of film, a little bit of production audio and some music and a sound effect. So it should be um, useful just to show you how this is all mixed together. Important, before you start doing any kind of editing or mixing, you want to make sure all your sound is normalized and that dialogue is compressed. Do that before you start cutting things up. Check the audio first for like credibility. If there's any big mistakes in it, like you've hit the microphone stand or something, you've got a big boom in it in the middle of your dialogue, then cut that out first, because otherwise that's going to really upset the peak levels for that, that chunk of audio. And this is my dialogue here, so I'm going to normalize that. So it's quite a small project. I'm going to go for normalizing at minus six decibels for this, give myself six decibels of headroom. Now this, I'm going to uh, open the audio gain function. So just press G on your keypad. Normalize max peak to minus six. Okay, and that's changed that. I'm gonna zoom in for the rest so you get a bit of a clearer vantage. So I've also got some a sound effect here that's peaking, look at zero. I'm gonna bring that down to six decibels below zero as well. So normalize that, so G, normalize max peak to minus six. And so see, let's brought that one down. And here, it's a bit of a music that I did on uh, this Juno 60 that's coming a bit famous, isn't it? So this is what it sounds like. So I'll select it, press G, minus six, and enter. If you've got lots and lots of tracks in your project, then take it down to minus 10, and give yourself a bit more headroom again. It's time now to look at my dialogue and uh, get that compressed. Apart from it being normalized, this hasn't been treated in any way. It's been recorded on a, a Synco lav mic going directly into the camera. Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music Academy. In a moment, we're going to have a look. So, that's raw dialogue. It's reasonably well recorded. It's a nice level. Make sure the audio is selected. Notice at the moment they're linked. So, if I were to move it around uh, at all, it will move with the actual video clip so it keeps it in sync. Keep them linked unless you need to do anything like cut bits out. Right click, you see unlink there, that would separate the two out. Unless you need them unlinked, keep audio and video connected so they stay in sync. There we go, link. Right, I was adding a compressor, wasn't I? Dialogue always needs compression. Don't try and produce dialogue without compression because it will sound unprofessional. Dialogue is naturally spiky and for it to like sit comfortably in the mix, particularly with the sounds, it needs to have a little bit of that dynamic range taken out so it's less spiky like this and it's more steady away. So for this, go to effects at the top, over to the right to audio effects, and you should remember this from working audition. I'm gonna find the dynamics plugin. This is my preferred compressor because the controls are nice and clear. There is a single band compressor down here, it works in a similar way, uh, with similar parameters on it. Let's apply this Dynamics processor. I'm going to pick it up, drag it and pop it on the audio, which is just almost off screen at the bottom here. But the reason I've done this is that watch on the left hand side over in effect controls that I've now selected. It adds to the bottom here. 
Okay, if you want to get rid of it again, you just click on it and delete it. So you can see why you need to apply these before you edit, because if you edit first, and you say you split this dialogue in two, then when you apply it, you'll have to apply it twice to each piece, and getting it consistent then is a lot more tricky, particularly important for normalizing. So there it is. Uh, over in effect controls, you've got all your stuff to control the visual aspects of the video. There's some basic audio processing, like volume and left and right panning. But I've added the dynamics in, and you'll see here that it's got an edit button. If you click on that, you should get the all familiar plugin. Graphic user interface, GUI, whatever you want to call it. This is the bit where you actually manipulate it. I'm just thinking this is called outdoors. I could try a gate, but I quite like the background ambience. So I'm going to leave it in. Uh, it seems to be well balanced. I've got a good signal to noise ratio there, and I want it to sound like I'm on location. So I'm not going to use the gate in this instance. Right, so I'm going to just pop the compressor on. And let's quickly go through these controls. So threshold, as you'll know from my previous videos, is the point that the compressor starts. Ratio is how much compression you add. So let's start with those two. Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music Academy. And you can see straight away as I move those two, you get in that red line moving there, which is your gain reduction. We don't want it too squashed. We don't want it to sound all nasally and flat. But at the moment, anything over 30, minus 34, decibels are getting compressed and it's at a fairly subtle ratio. I'll explain ratios in more detail in another tutorial. Right, the attack is really important here because with this very quick attack, the whole dialogue gets compressed. What I want is to allow some of the formants, as in the shapes of words, to pop through before it compresses, it makes it sound more natural. Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music Academy. Obviously sounds a lot quieter now. Uh, what's actually happened is that it's only the loud bits that have got quieter, if you see what I mean. I want the release pretty much as quick as possible in order for the compressor to recover to be able to compress the next bit. But if you get a kind of a pumping sound, then increase your release a bit. 50 milliseconds is just fine. Right, this is all important bit. We're going to restore what we've technically lost. It's Coming in about minus 10, minus 11, so I'm going to restore that back to at least that by putting another 10 decibels on it. And we should have, I'll just rewind back to the key bit of audio there. Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music Academy. Okay, so I've now got it back to the minus six. If I wanted to take it up to the zero, I could add another six decibels on. Uh, it should be more or less peaking there's not much more right, to add to this. Welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's music. To be honest I want it a little bit brighter as well I should have EQ'd it first. Let's pop an EQ in. Parametric EQ. Right do you see how I put it in there before the dynamics? So in this case I dragged it onto the actual effect controls. Going to edit. Music Academy. In a moment we're going to have a look. I'm going to take the bottom end out because I don't really need it. Ooh. So let's have a look at fundamental right, frequencies. Welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music Academy. around here. In a moment, we'll have a look. And there's some peaks Ooh. around here. I'm going to take some of the hiss off the top. <sighs> All right, let's try that once more. Yeah. Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music Academy. In a moment, we'll have a look. That's better, it's cutting through slightly better, along with the compressor, uh, just what I want. Find this fiddly over. Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music Academy. There we are, lovely. Okay, so that's that uh, dealt with. The sound effect is background. And it's already got the ambience on it that I require. It's already got the distance I require. <laughs> it's got the consistency that I require, so I don't need to do anything to that compression-wise. It is a bit spiky because I need it to kind of come and go with the impacts there. Then I'm not looking to compress that any further. This piece of music has already been processed. It has got one or two peaks in it though, interestingly. So let's uh, give this uh, a little blast. Yeah, it's the, um, the transient on that note from the Juno 60. It's fine. There's nothing over it. 
there's no dialogue over it, I would look at possibly reducing that a bit if I needed to. So I've got these three elements. I'm now happy with the actual audio itself. Now, your project will probably have more elements than this. It'll have more takes for a start and probably different camera angles and different bits of audio. So the important thing though is to make sure that in your audio mix, every single unique piece of audio has its own track. Notice that I'm using a separate track for each piece of audio. So I've got music here, I've got sound effect here, I've got dialogue here. Don't put dialogue and sound effects on the same track. Don't put two different dialogues on the same track. Don't put two different sound effects on the same track. So if I was going to bring in the sound of a slamming door or, or what have you, I would put it on a separate track. What I'm going to do now is mix these sounds so it's nicely balanced. And to do that, I'm going to use the audio track mixer, which is up here. Well, actually, it may not be. You might have to go and activate it first. If you go to Window, drop down, look for Audio Track Mixer and select it. It'll pop into this list here. Don't mix it up with the Audio Clip Mixer. The Audio Clip Mixer, I'm still yet to find any use for it. I find it hugely irritating. The faders only appear when there's something on the track. So your middle of mixing, it disappears. It's just so irritating. So use the Audio Track Mixer. Now, this is a really simple project. I've only got three tracks of audio. But you know, you may have like, if you've got six sound effects, you're gonna have six tracks just for sound effects. If you've got like three dialogues, you have another three tracks, that'd be nine tracks. If you've got music, that'd be 10 tracks. If you've got ambience, 11 tracks. You may have like a dozen or more tracks in your project. It's not unusual, yeah, even for a single scene. But once you're in the mixer, just label your tracks so you know what you're doing. So the first track is the dialogue. The second track is the is that sound effect. And the third track is the music. Remember rightly. So let's see how this all works together without mixing. Remember I've normalized this, so they should all be peaking at a similar level, except for now the dialogue, which I've given a big boost to using that makeup game. But I want the dialogue to be what's called the focus of the mix, the most upfront bit. Pretty typical, that's what dialogue does. And there's gonna be certain other sounds that are gonna be more background. But because I've already got that in balance, it might just be right as it is. All right, so let's see what the mix looks like. So the mix is picking at minus 8.1, minus 6.3, that's fine. Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music Academy. In a moment, we're gonna have a look That's Judith arrived then. <laughs> right. That's my daft uh, production. So look, I've overdone it on the dialogue. I've actually gone into the red. I can adjust that on the mixer or I can go back into the um, compressor and just reduce that makeup gain a little bit because I want it really quite hot, that dialogue. So the other thing I'm gonna do is I want the car crash to sound like it's coming from somewhere else like in front of me. Uh, so I'm going to give it the impression it's slightly off to the right. This is called panning and you place things in the stereo field. Uh, I mean, I'm very, very slightly left of screen, so I might nudge my dialogue over to the left and leave the music dead center because that's stereo. The music can be louder because there's nothing else with it. So I'm going to pop that a bit higher, give it a few more decibels. So panning gives us the impression of what we hear with two ears. So with the sound coming to the left, it comes to the left, the sound coming to the right, it comes to the right. Don't hard pan, because hard panning, hard left or right just sounds wrong. Be very subtle with your panning, because even though something comes to your right hand side, your left ear still hears it. But you will hear if it sounds unnatural. Let's give this a go now that I've reduced the level of the dialogue using the makeup gain in the compressor there. I've left the sound effects where they are because it seems to work, but I pan them slightly right, I pan the dialogue slightly left to give it separation. I've left the, the stereo mix of the music, which is stereo anyway, dead center. Otherwise that's gonna sound odd and I've given it a bit of an extra level. Let's see how this works out. We're keeping our eye on the master here, the mix, making sure it doesn't peak. So that went over, I need to nudge it back a little bit. Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music Academy. Still peaking. In a moment, we're going to have a look. Sound 
think all is down now. Let's try that again, because actually what I want here is some headroom on the uh, master as well. So at the moment we've got minus 2.7. It's not enough. Let's take that down again. What I want, I'm looking for roughly roughly six decibels headroom on the master as well, so that I can actually add some final processing. See where we are now, minus 12, minus 6.4, that's good. Minus 4.7, oh, minus 5.7. Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music that is Academy. Too strong. In a moment, we're going to have a look. Right, I've got. I'm trying again. I've got to get this balance right. Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music Academy. In a moment, we're going to have a look. Yep, that's much better. There's one little thing that's been bugging me though. So I don't know whether you noticed that uh, there's a little click here at the start of the dialogue. It's where basically all the ambience, everything comes in. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just grab a fade in, pop it in there. I want a very, very slight one. I don't want anything which is gonna upset the actual dialogue. So I'm just gonna check that, check this once more, play it through. Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music... There, that's dealt with that click. Right, so this is ready now to be exported and mastered. It's not quite there yet, because obviously when you actually listen to things on YouTube, Netflix, wherever it is, then they're going to be picking at zero. So for anyone who's interested in trying this, some very, very basic mastering techniques for you. I mean, this takes years to master, but I'm going to quickly show you what sort of things I would do. Premiere has this function where if you click the little arrow in the corner, you end up with these blank spaces here. And therefore, global plugins, they're incredibly tricky to use. And I wish Premiere would do something about this because you can't actually access the, um, the control panels. What you can do is go to amplitude and compression. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in the dynamics again. I'm going to start off just by putting a very, very light compressor on. I've put the wrong uh, effect in. Let's try again. Amplitude and compression, dynamics. There we go. So compressor enabled. Compressor threshold, quite subtle. I'll do minus 20. That's fine. And ratio, I'm just going to do a quite subtle um, compression there. We'll bring it down. I've got to use my ears now. I've got no meters. Academy. So I'm going to give the makeup gain just a little bit. So it's a point where in the makeup gain where it's peaking at zero. So let me see. Just going over. Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music Academy. In a moment, go have a look. If you do go over it, it's not a big deal because there's one more process we can add. And that's a, a limiter, we'll stop it going over. So I'm gonna uh, enable the limiter. I'm gonna set the limiter to just 0.1 below zero. Um, so limiter threshold, there you go. It's there already. We should now have a really strong, well-balanced mix. Right, welcome to Neathport Tolbert College's Music Academy. In a moment, we're going to have a look. Yep, yeah, after that, all that's left to do now is to export the media. For our college projects, we are exporting as high quality MP4s. So we're using the H.264 algorithm. You can also use some of these presets. For example, uh, I like the YouTube 1080 Full HD. It's great for start putting things on YouTube. 
All right, there is a high quality one still, but you've got to remember that some people haven't got the streaming capabilities, so choose wisely. Make sure you know where it's going to. So I'm going to videos, I'm going to give it a name. So this is introducing Academy. I'm going to my videos and that should be, it should be a high quality MP4. Just check that. Videos. There it is. Double click. And it plays. All right. You've seen that enough times. Happy days. Job done. Thanks for watching.